Hi there. In this video I wanted to take a, an in-depth look at the Surface Pro 3. I've done another video which is actually looking at how I use the Surface Pro 3 in my day-to-day -day workflow. But uh, for this video I want to take a look at this, uh, this new productivity tablet in, in a lot of depth and have a look at some of the new features about it. What's better about the Surface Pro 3 compared to the previous models as well. So one of the first things that you'll notice about the Surface Pro 3 is that it's a much bigger tablet. It now has a 12 inch screen and it's a new um, 3 by 2 aspect ratio so it's slightly different to the previous model which you can see here this is the Surface 2 and you can see that it's a fair bit bigger around the edges but also that's a different aspect ratio that, that it's taller this way and uh, it's only slightly longer this way so you can see that there's a fair bit of extra screen real estate up here now that of course is going to really lend it to be used in uh, portrait mode a lot better than the previous models which could be a bit skinny when you use them in portrait mode. Now in making the Surface Pro 3 screen a lot bigger you would think that the device weight would have gone up but in fact it's gone down so it's, it's actually lost a fair bit of weight probably around about 15% I'd say um, so it's down to around 800 grams which was around about the weight of the original iPad and you can see looking side by side at the Surface 2 so this was the, the RT device not the Surface Pro, um, and it's actually as thin as the Surface 2 was, which is another big improvement. The Surface Pro 1 and 2 were a lot thicker than the Surface models, the Surface uh, RT and the Surface 2, and you can see now that the Surface Pro 3 is as thin as the RT model was, which is around about the same thickness as an iPhone 4 or 5, so you can see that the device is very, very thin for a really large device. There's an interesting trend towards 12 inch devices and you can see here I've got some other 12 inch devices. This is the, uh, the Fujitsu Stylistic Q704. That's a 12 inch device as well. And also the Motion R12 which is a rugged tablet is also a 12 inch device. So a lot of the manufacturers are actually cottoning on to the fact that people need uh, a, a tablet that can replace a laptop and in order to do that you need a bigger screen. And so the Surface team have also uh, work that out and uh, the Surface Pro 3 screen at 12 inches 3x2 is a 2160 by 1440 resolution a really really high resolution and it's a really great screen to work from. Now I'm just going to turn the screen brightness up here as well and the other thing that you can see about it is while the screen is reflective as are most tablets and laptops these days it is quite a bright screen as well so it's very easily readable in any conditions. So as a productivity device, having that extra screen size is really valuable on the Surface Pro 3. But of course it still has an Intel Core i3, i5 or i7 processor. That's the fourth generation Haswell processors, just like the Surface Pro 2 did. Um, so that means that I can run programs like Adobe Photoshop, which I have here, or um, a Premiere that I have uh, running here in the background. Um, those programs really require quite a lot of processing power to be able to edit videos like these for example on a device on a tablet device requires a lot of processing power and grunt and the Surface Pro 3 has that on board with those Haswell processors it can easily handle the high definition content that we work with here um, lots and lots of it I'm probably going to uh, use about 20 gig of files to produce these couple of videos on the Surface and the Surface Pro 3 has both the storage space and the power to, to use that. So the engineering team at Microsoft in the Surface division have been really keen to improve the experience of the device as a laptop and so as I said the bigger screen really really helps that but there's two other innovations that have been built into the Surface Pro 3 that really help that a lot too. Now the first of those is this new keyboard design so you can see here that we've got a little um, folding hinge here on the top of the keyboard and uh, that's a new feature. Well, I'm going to grab the, uh, the old Surface 2 here just to show you how the old keyboard worked. This was the touch cover on the Surface 2 and you can see that you know there was no real structure in that keyboard. It tended to float around a little bit there. Um, so having that extra hinge on the back of the Surface keyboard here means that we've actually got a lot more structure in the keyboard. You can see that it doesn't really float around that much it's quite solid, so as you're typing on the Surface Pro 3 keyboard, um, it really feels quite nice and it feels much more like a laptop. So in addition to that extra structure that we have there in the keyboard with the Surface Pro 3, we've got 
a much bigger keyboard, courtesy of the fact that we have a bigger screen. And um, the keyboard also has a new trackpad. So you can see that the trackpad, again, if I compare this to the old Surface uh, Series, Surface 1 and 2 Series keyboards, you can see that the trackpad was really quite small. Um, and the Surface Pro 3 trackpad has really improved in size, first of all, but it's also improved quite a lot in touch experience. So now it's a, it's a multi-touch keyboard, so that means that I can do things like, uh, if I can figure, it out, figure out how to do it, zoom in and out of the uh, start screen here. And I can also swipe in from the edge to access things like the charms, and also to switch between applications that are open. So those features are all new to the Surface Pro 3. Uh, and the new series of keyboards that comes with that. This is of course the touch, sorry, this is the type cover keyboard. So this is one that actually has the nice physical feeling keys. The other thing about these keyboards is that they are now backlit as well. So, um, and you can adjust the backlighting on the, on the keys with a couple of keys on the top of the keyboard just there. So the other thing that's changed for the Surface Pro 3 and it, that helps the laptop experience quite a lot is the new kickstand. So the kickstand now goes to any angle. So sometimes when the light is reflecting off of the screen, it's great to be able to just pop it up and uh, sit it at any angle that you want it to be. That also helps it to sit on your lap quite a lot. Uh, having the right angle, having the right position for the kickstand uh, on your knees really helps this as a laptop type experience. So another great thing that the kickstand enables is when you're using the device as a tablet, let's go ahead and take the keyboard off. That's something that I really recommend you get used to doing. I see a lot of people out there who are using the previous Surface models and it seems like the keyboard never gets detached. Let's go ahead and lose the keyboard and try to use this thing as a tablet because uh, it kind of defeats the purpose not to detach the keyboard. One of the things about some of the other tablets that have a hybrid style where you've got a keyboard uh, attached to the tablet is that when you're pressing the top of the screen you'll get quite a bit of bounce so that you know the tablet will sort of bounce in its dock. With the uh, triangular shape of the kickstand on the Surface Pro 3, you don't get any of that, so you can really tap on the, the tablet quite well, and, uh, and it's not going to bounce, it's not going to shake, so you get a much better touch experience in that way. Um, also, when you're taking notes, um, maybe I'm, I'm using the touch version of OneNote here, and uh, I could be scribbling my notes here, and you can do that with the easel, with the stand mode there, so it's kind of like an easel with the kickstand out and you can do that quite well because you've got a nice solid structure behind it. Now that leads me on of course to the next thing that I wanted to show you which is the new Surface Pen. So the Surface Pro 1 and 2 pens were actually made by Wacom, so a very common pen that you'll find on a lot of Windows based tablet PCs as well as tablets like the, uh, the Galaxy Note tablets from Samsung. Um, the Wacom pens are interchangeable across all of those different tablets but um, Quite a few tablets over time, over probably the last four or five years, have been using this Entrig uh, stylus or, or active digitizer pen. And you can see here, I've got a couple of different samples of the Entrig pen. So there's a Dell one uh, that's been around on the Latitude ST series for quite a while. This is a, a motion computing pen, one that came from a, a CL900, uh, which was launched in about 2010, I think. And also a, a, a Fujitsu Entrig pen. So there's quite a few variations of this pen and they all will work with the Surface tablet. But one of the things that the Surface team have done with the Entrig pen is that they've really refined it quite a lot. Now I don't know if you can see this here or whether the camera's going to focus on this, but um, the, the pen tip on the previous Entrig pen, you can see it was a little bit brutal. It was kind of like a, a little bit, um, bit thick and um, a little bit chunky. Um, with the Surface Pro 3, what the team have done is they've actually really refined the pen tip experience. Um, the pen is sort of, uh, it has a much better feel to it. It's a lot quieter than the previous models of the Entrig pen as well. So that the old pens, you'd have to really press them down quite firmly to engage them. With the new Surface Pro 2 pen, and I'll, uh, I'll just fire up Microsoft OneNote here just to demonstrate. Um, it's very quiet on the screen but it's also a very lightweight engagement. Whereas with the, uh, the other models, you really, they made quite a sound, so they were quite noisy to use. And some of them, some of the implementations, you would really need to press quite hard on the screen for anything to happen. The other thing that they've done with the Surface uh, Pro 3 pen, the Entrig pen, is that they've, they've gone with a model that has two buttons on the side. And there were other 
variants of that, like the uh, the Dell pen here, has two buttons on the side as well. But uh, quite a lot of them, like these two, only had one button on the side. Um, the first button on the pen on the side of the Surface Pro 3 is used as an erase function. So if I just hold that button down, you can see that I can rub out all my mistakes there. And that uh, never happened. All right, and the second button on the side of the pen is a right-click button. So, of course, with the uh, with the Entrig pens, just like the Wacom pens, they are proximity sensitive. So that means the cursor follows me around on the screen without me touching the screen. So that means that I can use programs that maybe weren't really designed for touch. I can use access drop-down menus and hover over things with the pen, just like I could with a mouse. Um, I can tap to click, or I can hold the pen button down here and tap the screen to right click as well. So that's a thing, that's a, uh, a great uh, feature, the fact that the pen has two buttons on it. Now, of course, a lot of people have already seen this, the new purple button on the back of the pen, and I'm just gonna go and close OneNote down to show you what that does. When I click the button on the pen, what it actually does is it fires up Microsoft OneNote for me. So it's ready to take some notes there. It's just brought me up to the page that I'd already set up previously. If I click the button again, it will actually give me another new page and, uh, and it gives me a blank page then. So using OneNote, all my notes are all automatically synchronized up to the cloud, so um, I don't have to worry about losing them. Of course, they're also shareable and easily accessible. But uh, the other great thing about the pen button, the pen button is actually a separate device to the pen. So the pen mechanism itself is uh, just like all of those other Wacom uh, entry pens, I should say. Um, but the pen button in the top there is actually a Bluetooth device, and this will actually work without the uh, the tablet being without the pen being connected to it. So it's it's actually got its own separate set of batteries in there, and uh, it's a completely separate device. Such a simple innovation, though, that makes the uh, the Surface Pro 3 really stand out. So, for example, another um, really massive productivity bonus on the Surface Pro 3 is this. I'm going to turn the tablet off here and what you'll see, so my tablet should be locked now and I need a password to access and get back into that. Click the button and the tablet automatically wakes up ready for me to start taking notes. This is a, a pre-login screen so you can see I've got to unlock the tablet still and I can't access any previous notes that I've made there so you know I, nobody could just pick up the tablet, click the button and access all my meeting notes. But for me to be able to just jot down something quickly and for it to go and automatically sync up with my notes in the cloud, this is gold. So uh, I might, for instance, need to quickly jot down somebody's phone number. That's my number if you want to give me a call. Um, or I might, uh, you know, need to take a couple of to-do notes or, um, you know, when things are coming at me. Or maybe um, another scenario I have often is that uh, I wake up in the middle of the night with something on my mind and uh, remember to... YouTube, for example. And if I write that down, well then I'll remember it and uh, it'll be in my mind and I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the night and I can go back to sleep. So there's a lot of different scenarios where just that simple little pen button is going to make a huge difference to your workflow and to your life. It's, it's such a simple but such a fantastic innovation on this tablet. The pen is actually, as you can see, if I just turn the device around, it's around about just slightly thicker than the actual tablet. Uh, now, the reason for that is that it gives you a much better uh, writing experience, uh, having that thicker pen barrel. It's, it's actually a really, really nice size to hold in your hand. It's a metallic barrel. It's actually, it is a metal device. Um, the other thing, though, inside the pen, if I just take that tip off again, is that there is a battery for this pen. So previous models, the Wacom Active Digitizer pens do not use a battery. They're powered by the screen. But um, the new Entrig pen that's on the Surface Pro 3 has a 4A battery. These are actually very easy to find. You'll find them at your local Officeworks store or online very easily. Um, so they're actually not that hard to come by, even though you may not have ever seen one before. One of the other reasons that that pen has been used on this tablet is that the Entrig panel, because that pen is actually powered, uh, means that the actual display can be thinner. So it, it may be you know, a very small amount, but with the, uh, the Wacom uh, touch screens with the digitizer layer, basically what you have is you have across the top, you have the touch interface, then you have the, the glass, the display, and then behind that you have the digitizer layer which powers the pen. 
Now with the uh, with the Entrig model, you actually don't need all that. So the the touch and the in, the digitizer interface are all in one, integrated with the glass and put straight onto the screen. So eliminating that one extra layer does eliminate probably points of a millimetre, but it all counts when you're trying to get a device together this thin. And that also, in theory, um, should mean that the Surface Pro 3 gets better battery life, so the digitizer doesn't drain so much power out of the device as well. But lastly, getting back to where do you store the pen, well, on the keyboard here, we actually have a couple of ways that you can store the pen. Um, and I find these fairly reasonable. They're not ideal, but um, it's, it's quite workable. Um, what we do is we just can slot the pen in using the little clip on the top of the pen across this line on the keyboard here and that fits really well. Um, so that's uh, kind of purpose built there. But the other thing that the device does come with when you get the keyboard is this little stick on tab here that allows you to slot the pen in. Now I've been using that for around about a month and you can see that it's still attached. Uh, that's where I store the pen most of the time. If it's not in my pocket I store it there and that seems to be working quite well. So another thing that's really improved with the Surface Pro 3 is the, uh, the inbuilt camera. So you can see here, I'm just going to fire up the camera. We've now got a 5 megapixel front and back camera. I'll just take that photo there. Um, that's a really big improvement over the last cameras. I don't know what the previous models were, but um, 5 megapixel does the job. It's not the best camera in the world, but um, it's not the worst either. It actually takes really good video as well. So I might just uh, go back there and just demonstrate some video. It's very clear video, it's very smooth, frame rate's really good. And uh, let's stop that now and go back and view it. So it's probably a little bit close there, but um, you get the idea that the cameras are really improved. 5 megapixel front and back, great for Skype, great for capturing uh, those quick things that you need to do when you're out on the, on the road. So I guess the big question is, why consolidate devices? Why have a device like the Surface Pro 3 that can be both a laptop and a tablet? Why not just have a laptop and a tablet? Well, there's obviously a lot to be gained from having all of your information on one device. How many times do you say when you're with your tablet, oh, I need to go back to the laptop and do that? With a device like the Surface Pro 3, that never happens because you're at your desktop wherever you are so for me to be able to go and access a desktop program there it is at the time that you will save by not mucking around going back and forth between devices or retyping information that you've written on paper because your device doesn't really suit taking digital notes um, that alone will probably save you the price of the surface pro 3 in around about a month so if you're one of the many office workers and professionals who still uses pen and paper in your day-to-day -day work life you know what? It's time to go digital. The Surface Pro 3 is the device to do it. It comes out in Australia on August 28th, and this is really a device that will help you to make that change quite well.